Let's just focus now on a new poll of Americans living in the swing states. His testimony why this election is being called a polarizing one. It finds Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump in a st statistical dead heat. The swing states are on your screens right now and people here are concerned with inflation, immigration and political extremism or polarization. A new Ipsos poll asked questions around these issues and it found among registered voters about 7 in 10 respondents in swing states say that they are certain to vote this November. When asked who, 42% said Kamala Harris and 40% said Donald Trump. Interestingly, independent Robert F. Kennedy Jr. also got 5% of the votes in this specific poll. The poll also found that Trump's outperforms Harris on immigration, war, the economy and jobs, while Harris has the advantage on health care. Neither candidate has a clear lead on the issue of political extremism and polarization. And to get us the latest, our correspondent Susan Tehrani is joining us live from New York. Susan, good to see you as always. What's the latest you can tell us from New York? Yeah, as you mentioned, really a lot of talk about these swing states that will ultimately decide the direction of November's election. But while we talk about former President Donald Trump and Vice President Harris, we have to also talk about J.D. Vance and Tim Walsh, the candidate's running mates. You know, they both come from the Midwest, but they have very different stories. And ultimately, you know, while this, there is this understanding that vice presidential picks really won't matter that much, since we are in a sort of extraordinary election cycle, it, the character of these two men will also be front and center for voters to decide. So that was very interesting uh, to see that a lot of people you know, are interested in Tim Walz, who they didn't know maybe just a few weeks ago. And of course, J.D. Vance, he had more of a name recognition. And, you know, policy-wise, they're so different, but they come from the same background that it'll be interesting to see after that debate between Donald Trump and Vice President Harris, whether or not these two individuals will debate as well. Right, Susan. Susan, and for those of the people and our viewers who are watching the United States from the outside, explain to them how it works, because... In the U.S. elections, it doesn't uh, really count about who gets the most number of votes. It's actually these swing states that make the difference. They do make the difference, it's, and it's because we have an electoral college system here in the United States. There are a set of uh, states that usually historically vote blue. New York is one of them. There are states that historically vote red. For example, South Carolina is one of them. And each of these states have a different electoral colleges. And a number of electoral colleges will ultimately decide who will become the president. And then these swing states are the states that sometimes lean blue or sometimes lean red. And those are the ones that usually candidates really hope uh, to garner uh, the votes from and the electoral college from. But that's not to say that the popular vote doesn't matter. It is a barometer of where America stands and how they really feel. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people that are Democrats say that, for example, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. That means she was more popular among Americans than Donald Trump right. won uh, the Electoral College votes and became president. So, you know, that's the system that we have. It's a very odd and quirky system, but it is what it is. So that's why we really focus on these swing states that either lean blue or red during each election. Absolutely, Susan. Thank you so much for all those updates. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.